crews get a quick handle on a brush fire in Rancho Bernardo, and tonight they're mopping up and keeping eyes out for hot spots. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Drier conditions and Santa Ana winds are driving up the wildfire risk. CBS 8 Steve Price is live in Rancho Bernardo tonight with an update. Steve. So Marcella and Carla behind me, what you see is Battle Mountain and the fire raced up the one side of Battle Mountain and the concern was that it was going to go down the other side. On the other side, you have apartments, you have homes, a huge concern. Plus, as you can see, the 15 freeway is right here. And with the conditions we had, there was concern that the embers would blow across the 15 and start fires on the other side of the freeway. So you can imagine it was a very scary scene when this fire, when this fire first started around 2.30. Oh, the mountain, the side was on fire. The whole thing, just flames uh, burning like crazy. And that section over by the freeway, it was all, it was super close to the freeway. So the fire burned in heavy fuels, but crews got here really fast. They were able to stop it at five acres. Now, for precautionary reasons, 64 people were evacuated from the apartment complex and the homes that I talked about earlier. The good news, they should be allowed to return back to their homes any minute. They're not going to have to spend the night away from their homes. No structures burned. At this point, no injuries reported, so that's good news as well. Investigators aren't sure yet how this fire started. But they say this area, dry, windy conditions out here, there was a huge concern when it started, and they brought in two helicopters right away, and the fire chief told me that was a game changer. Um, during peak fire season like we're in right now, we staff both of them, um, and that's exactly why we do it. So two helicopters, alternating drops, really helps to slow the fire spread, uh, protect the nearby structures, and, and prevent any injuries. So um, a coordinated effort between ground crews and, uh, and the helicopters makes a huge difference. So at this point, they're saying the fire basically out. That said, crews are going to stay here for several hours, possibly even overnight. Their big concern, Carlo and Marcella, is that we'll have some hot spots reignite, and they want to make sure they jump on those quickly because, unfortunately, we've seen in the past what can happen if those are allowed to burn. Steve, impressive how quickly they were able to get on that fire and get it out. But we've been watching out for Santa Ana winds all day. What kind of role, if any, do firefighters say that those had on their efforts today? Carlo, when this fire first started, I was actually out in Alpine talking to CDF firefighters about the wind conditions and their huge concern out there in the Far East County. The good news, we're in kind of a bizarre pocket right here where we're not really getting those Santa Ana winds. So we do have very dry conditions, but the fire crews told me that for them, fortunately, the Santa Ana winds were not really a factor in this fire today. And we can be thankful for that. Steve Price reporting live from Rancho mm. Bernardo. Thanks, Steve. lucky that that was the condition right there where those flames broke out. The Santa Ana's and lower humidity are fueling brush fire concerns and in other parts of Southern California. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene, just because they weren't there then doesn't mean they're not still coming. Exactly. They are going to be peaking tonight through tomorrow morning. So we are talking about those Santa Ana winds that are taking over and also all the way into tomorrow. That's when we're expected expecting this wind advisory to expire. But taking a look at current conditions like Steve Steve said not really talking about strong winds in Rancho Bernardo. We do have a gust up to about 15 miles per hour. It's been fluctuating around that over the past couple of hours, but the humidity look at that 8% relative humidity. It is very dry because we did have a round of Santa Ana winds that picked up more so across the mountains earlier this morning, and so that's what dried out conditions and we're still seeing dry conditions out there. Poway 5% relative humidity, Alpine as well as Ramona and even Fallbrook into single digits. We're seeing some drier conditions closer towards the coast, but that's not the same. There's a little bit higher because of that marine influence. Wind speeds right now, 13 miles per hour for Ramona. We're seeing 30s with some of those gusts picking up across the mountains. 31 miles per hour for Julian from Mount Laguna. Boulevard at 31 miles per hour, 30 for Alpine and also Poway at 18 miles per hour. As mentioned, we are still talking about winds. They're picking up for tonight through tomorrow with the peak of the Santa Ana winds and that wind advisory until 8 p.m. We'll go ahead and time out those winds and also just how dry it's going to be tomorrow coming up. Carlo. Thanks, Carlene. And you can get the latest forecast and have weather alerts sent straight to your phone. 
Just download our free CBS 8 app or head to CBS8.com. A San Diego family is picking up the pieces of their Halloween decorations. They put up an extravagant display for the kids in the neighborhood every year, but vandals did several thousand dollars worth of damage to it over the weekend. CBS 8's Anna Laurel joins us live from that family's front yard in Cardiff. Anna, what happened? Yeah, Marcella and Carlo, check out the Halloween display at this house here behind me. You can see this takes so much work, a lot of detail here, but you see the big, huge skeleton. These are those big skeletons that have gone viral online and really hard to get your hands on. There's one here tipped over behind me. It's damaged, but check out the big one down here next to the house. Someone has ruined it. During the day, families come, they bring little kids, people are walking up and down the street, stopping to look at it. Every year, Rick Kassar and his family else. put up gigantic skeletons, zombies, and ghosts, and create a cemetery of sorts in his front yard for Halloween. They do it for the kids. And that's what my wife loves about it. Little kids are coming by all day long, stopping to look at everything. Last week, someone pushed over the 12 foot tall skeleton at his driveway and broke the base. They're pretty heavy, yeah, they're pretty big. It takes two people to stand them up. Rick put stones around the base to prop it back up, but Saturday night, vandals came again. This time, they knocked down both big skeletons beyond repair. To knock him down, they had to walk right up to the window. I had been right there, and I had just left, so the TV was on. They knocked him down, and the head is broken, and everything is all messed up. Rick has cameras. The one right here can see everything. His neighbors also have surveillance cameras. Today, he met with sheriff's deputies. Rick has been in education for decades and has his own suspicions. We have the second best school district in the state. Multi-million dollar houses, everybody buys their kids $2,500 e-bikes. And I think where we're missing the boat is that we're not teaching our kids gratitude. We're not teaching our kids responsibility. And in trying to give everything to our kids, we're failing to teach them how to be good citizens. Rick was picking up his son and wasn't home between 10 and 11 o'clock Saturday night when it happened. At first, he was angry. Now, he just wants whoever did it to be held accountable and learn from their Halloween mistake. We're not going to let it ruin it for the hundreds of good kids that come here and especially the little ones who enjoy it so much. Now, I spoke with the San Diego County Sheriff's Office today. They say with the current estimated damage, it is possible that the suspect or suspects could face felony vandalism charges for what they did out here. And I should say, um, this dad is not just picking on kids with e-bikes. His own son has one, too. They're just trying to be good members of the community and want to get that in return. Live out here in Cardiff, I'm Anna Laurel for CBS 8. Guys, Anna, did he say that he felt targeted in particular? Do you know if this is happening anywhere else in that neighborhood? No, you know what? I don't think he necessarily feels targeted. It's we drove around the block because there are a lot of people up here with some really great Halloween decorations. And one woman told me that when she comes outside in the morning, she has smaller skeletons sitting on some chairs. She'll come outside and their heads will be turned. She said, but nothing like what has happened up here at this house. All Just right. well, out of control. Been in contact with the sheriff's department. It sounds like he's got video, so we'll have to see what happens. Thanks so much, Anna. New developments tonight in a missing persons case involving a former Navy SEAL and a Chinese tourist. More human remains were found in the Anza Borrego desert over the weekend. CBS 8's David Goffertson talked to an attorney who says he believes the remains are of the missing woman, Feng Jin. The Anza Borrego desert can be a very unforgiving place, especially in the summer months when temperatures can rise above 115 degrees. Former Navy SEAL John Fitzpatrick and Chinese tourist Fang Jin mysteriously went missing in late July. Shortly thereafter, his four-wheel drive Toyota pickup was found abandoned in Anza Borrego, south of the Harper Flat area. Now CBS 8 has learned Jim's remains may have been found in the area. Fitzpatrick's remains were discovered in September in Harper Canyon. All indications are that they found remains on Saturday. Attorney David Schmidt got word of the discovery from a private investigator hired by Jin's family. You have a 47-year-old woman with two beautiful daughters, one 
in college, the other, a young girl, something like seven years old, and all of a sudden they don't have a mother. And so it, it hits you that it's a tragedy. Jin flew to California in July from her home in China to meet up with 52-year-old Fitzpatrick, who lived in Morongo Valley. She came here for romantic purposes, had been uh, texting him for for something like six months prior to coming here, and they definitely had rapport. And her expectation was that he was going to show her around the area, Morongo Valley, Morongo Basin, Joshua Tree State Park, and see whether the relationship developed. Schmidt has been involved in the case and says the San Diego Sheriff's Department notified Jin's family of the discovery, but not the public. San Bernardino County Sheriff emailed me a statement saying, quote, human remains were located over the weekend in the Anza Borrego area. However, no positive identity of the remains has been reported to us. I rode out to Fish Creek Wash in Anza Borrego over the weekend. Did you see an abandoned blue pickup truck, Toyota? A law enforcement source told me Fitzpatrick's pickup truck is still out there and it's going to take a helicopter to get it out. David Godfordson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Right now, the San Diego City Council is considering several options to make public restrooms more available in the downtown area. In May, a grand jury made recommendations, and the city's new draft response tonight lists the ones that they are working on. It includes expanding 24-7 access to restroom and handwashing stations, making an online map of the locations and posting those maps downtown. Council President Shawnee Lo Rivera says they are also looking at ways to save money to build more bathrooms. The cost of maintenance has been a reason why the city has either closed restrooms in the past or not opened more. We my office and my, again, don't think that that's a reason not to have restrooms open. The mayor's goal is to have bathrooms within a five minute walk of most places downtown, but that is still being explored. The city's response is due on November 10th. A Lucadia woman contacted us earlier this month, heartbroken and furious about what happened to her husband. He took off for a short ride on his e-bike and crashed into a curb. You doofus, I'm, I mean, it's like, Oh, I just want to throttle him. He, you know, if he had his helmet on, if he was wearing his helmet, he would be walking away with just facial fractures. Yvonne Moots poured out her heart to us, anger, sadness and all. She really wanted to get the message out that everyone should wear a helmet every time they get on an e-bike, no matter how short the distance as you're traveling. And now she is asking us to make that point again because over the weekend she told us that her husband died of his injuries. They were married for 33 years.